Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another edition of Hilal Live. My name is Luqman Shadrach, coming to you live from the Cape Town studios. I hope you had a good weekend. I take over until about 6 p.m. and then Faraz Patel and the team then continues till about 7.30 inshallah. I believe it's snowing and storming in Johannesburg. I hope you are keeping warm wherever you are. Now in the general Cape Town area, there's so many wonderful organizations that help our communities that do wonderful work and I thought let's invite one of them into studio and find out a bit more about the great work that they do. In studio I'd like to welcome Bashir Solomons who's part of Thins on Wheel. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran so much for having me on. And it's Bahisha. My apologies no, for mispronouncing <laughs> your name. Bahisha, um, your organization has been around in Cape Town for so many years. They've been helping so many people um, in and around the greater part of the Western Cape as well. But for those of our viewers that don't know too much, uh, tell us a bit more about your organization. Things on Wheels was started 22 years ago by okay. our founder mem uh, member, Kamila Bas. Mm -hmm. Um, he had a nephew that was born with physical disabilities. So when the child went to Eros school, mm -hmm. Kamil used to pop in and watch the children playing and stuff. And he just felt that he wanted to do something more. Mm -hmm. So he ended up fixing the school, putting in TVs, doing little party packs and things for the children. And obviously when the child left that school and went to another one, he mm -hmm. followed suit and mm -hmm. did the same thing there. Um, and that's where Things on Wheels started. I see. 22 years ago. 22 years ago. So obviously, um, we are, we're still not government funded. Right. Um, when Kamil started, everything was done by him and his family members. Oh, wow. And he's got an awesome family, I must say. Okay. So that's how they started. And obviously, um, by the time Kamil, when the child left school, Kamil started looking for some other projects to do. And he came across the fact that the Western Province Feeding Scheme mm -hmm. um, has or supplies food to some of the schools, but there mm. is a little margin of schools that don't get food. Right. So he approached um, the department and got permission to go into the school. So we started feeding 491 schools bread every day wow. or sandwiches um, because we believe that a hungry child cannot be educated. Absolutely. Absolutely. I fully agree with you. And, you know, the, uh, the more that we can do or the little we can do, you know, it just alleviates um, some of the need out there as well. Take us through those earlier years. I'm sure, you know, there must must have been quite a few challenges. There must have been quite a few uh, projects that you wanted to get into, but obviously you can't be everywhere at the same yeah. time. So, Kamil, as I said, Kamil started with schools and then he was working for a company, Ali's. Okay. Um, and they came on board and they started feeding in informal settlements once a month. So they go in with a mobile clinic, some doctors on board. Um, do blanket drives, food drives, um, gave out party packs, that type of thing. Okay, and this was all funded by Come family in. members? Family members Amazing. and some members of the public, obviously. Wow. Wow. And that's how it grew. So now we've gone, I came aboard about six or seven years ago. Okay. I met Camille through helping um, a mosque okay. raise funds to buy the building. Right. Um, and we sort of... We're circling each other because we're both difficult to work for. Right. Kamil won't agree with me, but we are. Um, we want what we want. And mm. obviously doing what we do, it's not glamorous. Mm. Okay? Mm. It's by no stretch of the imagination. So you have to put in 200% of yourself. Of course. And I would imagine going into certain areas as well. I mean, it's just heartbreaking to see the amount of need that is out there. 22 years ago... You know, we even up to 10, 15 years ago, the need was still very, you know, it was quite a lot at the time. It was a lot, but I think, alhamdulillah, we got through that. Alhamdulillah. Um, obviously, when COVID came along, it just, mm. it just exploded the whole situation. So we had to change the way we think and the way we do work. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, our approach to getting funding has had to change as well. Mm. So we get a lot of private donors, like maybe a little business, mm, mm. or we get people that want to donate 100 rand every month. I yes. always tell people, you don't need to donate thousands of dollars. If you've got 100 rand, 10 mm. rand, you know, you stretch that money. We of know course. how to stretch that money. Um, we're fortunate enough that we do partner sometimes with people. Nice. Um, 
not always because we're very careful who we partner with because mm -hmm. we like to keep our reputation squeaky clean and we've got a good reputation. Of course. Um, but we find some common ground and that's what we use and mm -hmm. we go forward. And we also like to not just invade a community, we actually mm -hmm. deal with the community members inside the community okay. so that we know what the needs are, who needs it. Um, it's just easier to work that way because mm -hmm. we only... We, Things on Wheels is actually four people. Right, no it's, way. Yes, it's two drivers that get paid a salary and myself and Carmel. Myself and Carmel don't draw a salary. Mm -hmm. We don't have premises because we don't believe in paying for premises and right. stuff like that. We want to use the money somewhere else. So we do everything ourselves. We split it between Carmel and myself and Amazing. we try not to tramp on each other's toes. Very <laughs> difficult with OCD people. Um, but that's what we do. Right. And obviously we've got a huge support structure from our family and our friends. And we have some volunteers that comes along. Mm. So most of the, the, the background work Kamil and myself do. Gotcha. And then obviously we have our drivers riding up and down and fetching and collecting. Okay. Yeah, the very colorful cars. We can't miss them <laughs> uh, because uh, they're there for a reason as well. You've painted them that color because you want to be visible yes. in certain areas and show the community that you are there to help. Do you still participate in school feeding schemes? Yes, we still do. We During COVID, we change some of the feeding schemes into soup kitchens, actual soup kitchens, where they feed the children twice a day or once a day, some of them. Okay. Um, it was just to alleviate the fact that you have this hungry child not getting any food at home, but at least they're being fed at school. Mm. So during lockdown, we had like 79 soup kitchens running. Wow. Obviously, we couldn't sustain it forever. We of would course. love to. It's now down to 22. Still a lot. It yeah, but um, we're getting there, we're getting there. And, you know, there is such a lot of NPOs, NGOs. I mean, during lockdown, you could see um, these people stepped up to the plate. Lovely. I mean, there was like a little auntie down the road using a pension money to make soup. But that is yeah. what we need to do. Of course. That was the only people that was actually keeping our communities fed. Mm -hmm. So the organization itself, is it, is it a registered NPO? Yes, it's a registered NPO. Okay. Um, we obviously have a Section 18A certificate. Nice. So if you want to donate and you need a tax rebate, whatever, mm. we are quite okay. welcome to Yeah, And, to you know, that. As, as you mentioned as well, COVID really exacerbated the need out there as well. Yeah. And I, I bumped into you on a couple of projects that you were busy with in various, uh, you know, schools around the, the Western Cape. How did the schools take to your assistance? I mean, were they forthcoming? Uh, did you have some resistance? Was there a project plan that went into going into a project like that? Um, yes, there was a pro project plan. Um, we first started with schools that we were already working with okay. and that we had good relationships, uh, relationships with the principals. Mm -hmm. um, so they knew who we were and they knew how we worked. Okay. Um, it was very easy. Um, obviously, Brilliant. we do the due diligence. I obviously go at random to schools mm. and do whoever we work with and do checkups because I'm that type of person. Of course, you need to. Uh, yes, you need to do due, due diligence. Mm. I mean, you can't expect a donor to trust you yeah. and you're not doing the full work to Absolutely. show that you're transparent. Um, I always say to Kamil that, you know, integrity, accountability, responsibility, a moral compass and ethical compass is what makes things on wheels different. Mm. Um, and that is what we strive to do. Mm. And mm. we try and help everybody wherever we can. And if we can't help, we will find somebody to help you. Um, the schools are, I, I actually think they're very willing mm -hmm. to allow you to come and help them. Um, we're obviously not running it physically ourselves. They have people that can do it, so long we supply the ingredients mm. um, or any other assistance that they need, and that goes for any project. Okay. We're chatting to Baisha Solomons, who's part of Thins on Wheels. It's an organization based in the Western Cape that does amazing work in our communities. After the break, we catch up on some of the wonderful projects that they have initiated and some of their future plans, and also how you, the viewer, can also get involved. You are still listening to Hilal and watching Hilal Live. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Hilal Live. Thanks for watching us on Channel 347 on DSTV. My name is Lukman Shadrach. Coming to you live from our Cape Town studios. It's not as cold as it is in Johannesburg, I believe, and I hope you're keeping safe wherever you are. In studio, we've got uh, a wonderful organization that's based here in the Western Cape called Thins on Wheel and, uh, Wheels, and Baisha Solomons is chatting to me about the wonderful work that they do. And I'm sure you saw some of the images that came up on screen earlier 
uh, with uh, the team being out and about in the Western Cape, helping those that are in much need as well. Baisha, Jazakala once again for coming into studio. I really, really appreciate it. You know, I've followed your organization for many years and, and, and watched the amount of effort and, and, and camaraderie that comes together when you partner with different organizations, media houses. And I think the more that we can band together, the more effort that we can put into every project. Do you find that happening? Yes, a lot. Um, you know, when you find common ground with whether it's a radio station, a TV station, or NPO or NGO, um, it's just e- it makes things easier mm. when we all got a common goal. Of course. And everybody puts in more than 100%. And I think the most rewarding thing about doing what we do is that at the end of the day, when the project is successful and has been executed, mm. you just like, it feeds your soul. Of course. It feeds your soul. I mean, you've been on a lot of things with us, whether on the radio or, yeah. you know, on the TV channels. Um, you know, you always feel like, wow, mm. I've actually pulled this off. Of course. And, you know, the as, as much as we protect the dignity of the recipients, yeah. at the same time, you also want to give them an opportunity to help themselves, I would imagine, as well. Yes. So, Things on Wheels is not just about charity, mm. which is like giving out for free. Right. Um, we're about upliftment. Nice. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say something now that we normally don't put on our websites, okay? Right. So there are a few children who pay, whose parents can't afford to school them, whether it's primary school, high school, special needs schools. Mm. Um, we choose, depending on how much money we've got, every year we have a few recipients, so mm-hmm. we sponsor them for the whole year so they can Brilliant. stay at those schools. Um, we also... Uh, do a few varsity students. Okay. Okay, that's not something that we put out there, but um, that is the type of thing that we do. We also try to get jobs for people. Oh, nice. Um, try to upskill them. So it's it's about upliftment as well and development, mm. and that's the only way you can go. You can't just feed people all the time, and you're not actually getting rid of the problem. Of course. Tell our viewers a bit more about some of the wonderful projects you've taken. I know I've attended one, at, I think it was at the Seapoint Promenade, yes. where you guys had a whole lot of people in wheelchairs, yeah. and you have a bit of a wheelchair walk, is yeah. that what it's called? It's called the annual wheelchair walk. Okay. Um, we have it every year around end of February, beginning of March. Mm. Um, that we normally have one of the radio st- uh, stations coming on board and then Lovely. broadcasting their live. So you speak to some sponsors, you speak to some participants. So we have wheelchair-bound participants and then, you know, our able body participants. Lovely. So it's a five-kilometer fun walk. Um, and then the able body people obviously pay. Of so course. it's quite a logistical nightmare because you need public liability license. Mm. You need permission from the, um, the city. Um, you need EMSs on standby. Correct. Um, we have marshals and everything. So we also have Alagante, which we oh, always nice. use because we never get complaints from them. So they serve everybody breakfast. So we have the five kilometer walk. When you're done, we give you a medal. Lovely. You get a goodie bag. Um, and it's just so that people that are in homes that are wheelchair bound, bed bound, mm. has an outing. Of course. Um, Dialer Ride provides a fantastic service to Brilliant. fetch them and bring them back. It is a logistical nightmare. Is that a city initiative, the Dialer Ride? It's a um, city initiative, but we they partner with us to bring all our disabled people brilliant. to the venue. Brilliant. Um, that is, of course, Carmel's um, little baby. Mm-hmm. So Carmel's very good in that. So Carmel does all that. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> um, I just type out the list of who's coming in. Yeah. Are they, have they got help with them or not? Because most of the disabled people are either mentally or physically handicapped. Some of them have um, carers with them. Mm. Um, so they have great fun because, I mean, they don't always get out. Of course. So they look forward to this. So it's a very big thing for them. And then, right. of course, when they get all the eats from Alagante mm. and, you know, they lay the tables with your sisters and coffees and teas and stuff. And the atmosphere is very vibey. Nice. And once in a while we have a comedian or we have a singer mm-hmm. um, singing. So, I mean, you've been there. Uh-huh. So yes. it's, it's a very good vibe. Correct. So, so that's an annual one of the annual projects that yeah. you do. Are there other initiatives that uh, you have through the year? Okay, so we have three annual events that we always have. Okay. Um, that is also a fundraising opportunity for us mm. to, you know, use that money for other projects that we want to do. So we normally have the wheel walk. Then we have the Comedy Jive Festival, okay. which has just passed. Oh yes, um, that was at the Baxter. I had yes. Fahim in the other day as yeah. well. So we deal directly with Eddie Gossar, mm, stunning guy. guy. Mm. So we take a few shows, we sell it out, and then obviously we get a percentage which nice. goes towards our projects. Brilliant. 
Um, this year we were fortunate enough that Camel got Africo Solo, okay. which is a solar paneling company, um, to come on board. So they're partnering with us. Um, and we're going to be rolling out. Schools have already been designated. Mm-hmm. Um, and homes and things where we're going to put in solar panels and stuff. Nice. So the, I think the sponsorship, I stand under correction, is un, it's just on 100,000 rand. Alhamdulillah. So we're going to be putting in solar panels in some of the projects where we work. And you know, with the electricity hike yeah. going up as well, that's really going to help people. Yeah. So that's an, another initiative that's yeah. coming up as well. And then we have, at the end of the year, we normally have our annual Things on Wheels um, dinner evening, which we host yeah. here. Okay, yeah, um, because, at Islamia. Yep, because it's got the biggest auditorium. And yeah. of course, we only use Alagante. Brilliant. Um, and I'm not posting why we're using them. We use them because... They are the best, mm-hmm. and we don't want complaints because if your food is nasty, yep. your event is nasty. Correct, yeah. So that's what we have, and we have, you know, the general public taking tickets, and obviously all our sponsors and donors are there, and then we have entertainment, mm. um, and that is our last big event for the year because that's how we raise our additional money. Brilliant, brilliant. And these events have already built up a nice following as well, so people look forward to it. Corporate can get involved. Yes. And like you said, you do supply a Section 18A certificate as well, yeah. where people can you know, claim that back as a rebate. Um, future plans? What can we expect? Any future projects? And how can our viewers get involved okay. as well? Um, for anybody of the public who want to donate a 10 rand, a 5 rand, 50,000 rand, <laughs> um, you can go onto our social um, platforms, mm-hmm. social media platforms. It's under Things on Wheels. Okay. Um, you can just look up Things on Wheels and it will come up to you. Um, you can donate whatever you want to. Okay. You can donate your time even. Nice. Um, or come and help us on a project or come and see. We, we are very transparent. And if you mm-hmm. obey our rules, you're almost welcome to tag along or sure. to come and help. Um, so any form of donation, whether it's in cash or kind, mm-hmm. some people can't donate money. Mm-hmm. Some people can give a blanket. Some people perishables. can give perishables. Okay. We accept any form of Fantastic. donation. Fantastic. Okay. That's, I think that's also very important because, um, you know, I, at times pe- people are finding it difficult to donate cash and maybe they've got an excess in, in, in their grocery cupboard that they can contribute as well. Yeah. Um, location in and around Cape Town, um, drop okay. off points. Okay, we are based in Maitland. Okay. Um, my phone number and Kamil's phone number is on our website. Brilliant. As well as on our Facebook pages. Um, you can dial those numbers. We will arrange for our drivers to fetch it or I'll fetch it myself. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so um, volunteers can also come through. Uh, yeah. Do you have a certain age category? Um, not actually. Okay, so various projects would determine yes. you know, various ages that can contribute as well. Yes. Advice for those that would like to get more involved, you know, especially in something like an NPO, especially in something like some of your projects that uh, you desperately need people at times. What are your biggest events where you would need people? I think I will walk because this year we were fortunate enough to have uh, South African Scouts volunteering. Oh, yes, I remember so that, that was great. Nice. Um, obviously, it, it, it depends on the project and, and the area that we're going into because okay. obviously we have to take in security and mm. all that type of thing. So um, I think it's best if people phone us okay. and I can discuss that on the phone with them. Okay. Vaisha, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Jazakala, so much to you and your amazing team. Um, for always being there for the community. I don't think you guys get a thank you as often, but let me tell you, from someone that's been watching the organization for a long time, you guys are doing absolutely amazing work. Keep fighting the good fight. And I look forward to joining you in some of your other projects. Shukran so much, Lukman. It's an absolute pleasure to come on your show. And I like working with you. And I will obviously involve you in some more projects. Inshallah. Inshallah. And shukran to you and your radio station for a Sorry, TV station for having me on. Only a pleasure. All the very best and we chat soon. Have a great Shukran. evening. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. And that's how we end our interview with Thins on Wheels. If you'd like to contribute, whether it's cash or kind, do go on to all the very uh, the big social media platforms. You'll find their details. Find out how you can get yourself involved, your family involved. It's now holiday time as well. So maybe you and the family want to get involved in uh, a certain project that they're busy with. Uh, contact uh, Baisha Solomons and the team and you can find out a bit more. After the break, we chat to an entrepreneur who's making in great strides also in the Western Cape. Do join us. You are still watching Hilal Live.